I am so glad you're here for another episode of Mechanism Monday, where every Monday we write out the electron pushing arrow mechanisms for different chemical transformations. In last week's video, I asked if you could solve the mechanism for this chemical transformation. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and try it independently. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll give you another mechanism to solve for next week's video. I recently received a comment down below about the synthesis of cubane, which is a cubic structure that basically looks like this compound, except for it doesn't contain that carboxylic acid coming off of it. And while I think this comment was in jest, I actually thought that it was a pretty interesting mental exercise and I wanted to see if I could come up with a synthesis that included effectively the synthesis of cubane. So remember, I read all the comments down below and if you have any questions or want to see anything in the future, I'll make sure to check it out. This specific synthesis actually came from a publication in JAX by Eaton and co-authors in actually the synthesis of cubane. And this was published in the Journal of American Chemical Society in 1964, in case anyone is interested in checking out their work. And in that paper, they described the ring contraction towards the synthesis of cubane and included this reaction. And in this reaction, we're using a base to do that ring contraction. So notice that this is a five-membered ring at the top, whereas the ending product only has a four-membered ring. And the first step in this reaction is to take KOH, which remembers an ionic compound, which effectively can be thought of as hydroxide, will come and do a nucleophilic attack at this carbonyl carbon, opening it up and giving us a product. And I'm gonna try my best to draw this in one take, where we have a structure that looks mostly the same. So here we have that five-membered ring, and now we have an OH group coming off of it, and now we have a negatively charged oxygen as well that is going to have three lone pairs of electrons on them. Here is the location of our bromine, and then from here I can draw in the rest of our structure, which is going to look mostly the same. Hey, I'm impressed with myself that I was actually able to draw that in one take. So once we've arrived at this stage, what's gonna happen is these pi electrons are gonna come down to reform that carbonyl carbon. But the productive pathway is not the one where the hydroxide would just be kicked off. And in, in addition, that's not the most stable leaving group in this consideration. So instead, what is gonna happen is that one of these carbon, to carbon bonds is actually gonna be liberated and opened up. And that's actually what happens is that these electrons go over here and that is what kicks off the bromide so that gives us our final product in just these two steps so notice these electrons are used to form the ring that ends up being between these two carbons which is located in our cubane structure here and this is possible because when bromide leaves it is a great leaving group that is going to be relatively stable as a leaving group so then notice if we take these electrons, and instead of being a carbon to carbon bond at this location, instead we're forming a carbon to carbon bond at the top of this four-membered ring, and then we have one carbon over is gonna be where our COH group is, or our carboxylic acid. If you enjoyed this week's mechanism, make sure to give it a thumbs up down below. And for next week, I'd love to see if you could figure out the mechanism for this chemical transformation. Drop your thoughts as a comment down below, and make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you never miss another Mechanism Monday. I'll see you next week.